members basically sell into the community, commercialize. Do you foresee yourself playing a similar role? Well, I don't think there'll be any one entity doing that, um, but we'll provide infrastructure to allow application developers to easily get distribution and you know host whatever business model they have in mind. You know, some developers just want to give stuff away for free. Um, some developers want to you know allow you to try something before you buy it. So maybe it you know is a demo version that they give away for free and they upsell you to a different version. Um, so the infrastructure, is similar to how YouTube works, right? It's just going to be a repository that things get hosted on. And technology allows you to easily put that on a handset. Geographic regions that are more interested in Android or that you feel are going to help push it forward faster. Yeah, I mean, it's been limited up until now to the planet Earth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't, I, no I'm really disappointed. Yeah, nothing, <laughs> that time travel thing hasn't been figured out yet. Um, we have a lot of interest. It's a global interest. Um, you know, there's we've we've done a lot of things to make sure that. Um, you know, in the development of this effort with the 34 partners of the OHA, we made sure that, you know, everybody was kind of represented. Um, so we weren't, you know, drawing any maps and saying, okay, this is going to go this way and this is going to go that way. So it is really a collaborative effort, a development effort. It's very collaborative. Can you talk a little bit about why you've chosen to keep it in-house up to this point? And then once you do open it up, um, how much will be open and what specifically will be closed? and what those, those closed parts might mean for developers. Sure. Um, well, look, I mean, there's different types of open source projects, right? There's the type where, you know, a, a bunch of people get together from ground zero and they say, hey, we're going to create an open something. And it's kind of loosely coupled. Um, you know, usually it's not a corporate entity sponsoring it. It's a bunch of individuals. Um, they grow it very organically and it becomes something, something big. That takes a long time. Um, that organic nature is rather unstructured. Um, some argue that that's actually a benefit, that unstructured, there's a period of incubation. That's a very interesting time. Um, we think there's this, a window in the industry, especially the mobile industry, where it's very important that there's an open platform out there that's truly open. So we chose to gather the 34 companies of the OHA together to create this thing a little more structured than the <coughs> organic model, and then open source it when it's, when it's reached kind of a critical mass. Um, and that's what we would call 1.0. When a handset is capable of running the platform and a consumer is happy with the experience, that's what we call um, critical mass. Um, so, you know, and then the other question is related to licensing, right? What kind of license do you pick? Um, do you pick the license where um, you insist to the rest of the community that um, they contribute back their intellectual property, right? So again, it's taking this position of let's develop this collaboratively, but let's not dictate business models or whether you have to give back your source code or anything like that. Um, so that's why we chose the Apache license. Um, and the Apache license is essentially, um, you know, you can use the copyright, you can use the software for whatever you want, you can use pieces of it. Um, you don't have to contribute your modifications or your derivative works back. We encourage you to, it would be great if you did. I think this whole open thing is going to catch on. Um, so um, uh, the, um, the staff, when, when you asked how much of the staff will be open, um, you know, there is open source, you know, community contributions that we use. We are customers of open source in the stack as well, right? For example, Linux. The Linux kernel is an open source project that, you know, Android is built upon. Um, but pretty much everything, um, as Steve said in the, in the keynote presentation, it's everything you need to build a phone. So it's your contacts application, it's your database, it's your uh, Java virtual machine, it's the user interface. It's pretty much everything that Steve showed you on, on screen will be open source. Um, the only things that aren't open source, there's certain applications that are specific to um, um, some Google services where the services themselves haven't been opened up yet. And that's just a roadmap thing, right? We're going to, you know, we are on a mission here to open up as many of our, uh, of our backend services as possible. And there's probably somebody here more qualified to talk about it than me. But those, you know, when we hit 1.0, those applications will hold back until the services are ready to be open. Open platform, and you have you know a huge number of developers creating their own applications, and users install them. Excuse me. I wonder. Uh, I mean, do you envision the carriers actually permitting people to uh, be that uh, uh, that free with their phone to you know install whatever software? And a related question: Does that actually pose any problems uh, for management and reliability, like we have on a lot of uh, you know personal computers these days? So the first question is, you know, what do I think carriers will do? Um, so, I mean, I would kind of bounce that question back, and this is rhetorical, so 
but you don't have to come back to the mic. Um, <laughs> the, um, it, you know, why wouldn't the carrier want to allow any application to be put on a cell phone? Um, I think some of the things that have prevented them from doing it um, so far is having a platform that's robust enough to give them a feeling of security. Um, and I choose that word purposely, right? Um, the, uh, the platforms today, I mean, a lot of them are 20 years old. Right, the thing that's running your cell phone—it's been around since you know ones and zeros were invented. So, um, and that's when they use lowercase l's instead of ones. <laughs> the um, uh, the uh, uh, you know so so I don't think when those platforms there's just a lot of legacy there, and I think when those platforms were designed, security wasn't the first thing they're thinking about. Well, now here we are, fast forward um, in the internet um, generation, right? And you know security, you know things come to you. Right? That didn't used to happen. Um, so when you build a platform from a clean slate, that's the advantage that you have, is to think about those things and think about what's going to give the industry, whether it's an OEM or a carrier, um, a safety net. Um, should things, uh, you know, should malware or something else be, be produced for these handsets? So I think I answered both of those questions in, in one shot. There, it's it's a platform that's going to it's going to it's going to enable the carriers to do more innovative things with their services. Will they? I hope they do. It's typically a hardware function, and the handset that uh, that was demoed on Android uh, uh, didn't have a multi-touch sensor. Does the software support it, though, if you do have a sensor? The software doesn't need to support it. You don't need to go out of your way to support any particular hardware uh, sensor. So, you know, when that hardware developer um, puts that sensor in a handset, I'm hoping that that hardware developer will write the driver. 